Myanmar citizens fight back with hunting rifles. And now this is a topic report. And we're going to lead off with the top focus here. 11 killed as Myanmar protesters fight troops with hunting rifles and firebombs. That's right. What's going on in Myanmar? People are uh, they're, they're exerting their Second Amendment rights. You know, I say Second Amendment because we call it Second Amendment. But really, that gun rights, they, that belongs to the world. Every human being on the face of the planet has a right to bear arms, innately given to them by their creator. The creator gave us the capacity to defend ourselves, and no government has a right to deny that to anyone on the planet, as Myanmar most assuredly has been doing. And now, hopefully, the Myanmar citizens, after they finally overthrow these shackles, will uh, create something that will at least uh, allow people to have, have arms in the future. I was going to say they need it. Anti-coup demonstrators in Myanmar fought back with hunting rifles and firebombs against a crackdown by security forces in a town in the northwest, but at least 11 of the protesters were killed. Other story, other headlines for Myanmar. We have Myanmar's envoy to UK says he was locked out of embassy. So the UK is, you know, oh, we have to, you know, it's, uh, you know, we're a nation state and uh, the junta is really, they got the guns. They got most of the power in, in, in this region, this geographical plane called Myanmar that is being controlled by these, uh, literally these warlords. So we're going to recognize the warlords because that's, that's what we do as nation states. We got to, so we're locking you out. We're, and here you have Britain says, forced to exceed as Myanmar junta sacks London envoy. Myanmar's ex-UK envoy says military attaché has occupied embassy. Celebrity model arrested amid coup crackdown. That's from BBC. This, this, both of these last stories from BBC. This other one, Britain says forced to exceed is from MDTV. Myanmar really bears watching at a very real level because what you have is you have a, a, a small group of uh, powerful elites that are seeking to control a country where significant portions of the country, at least half, are not don't don't recognize the authority. The authority has no legitimacy, according to them. And uh, now we're going to find out to a degree to which technology is going to enable these human beings to fight back. You're already seeing things, Lena, covered it in past stories, how they're they're taking to the FM airways. You lock them out of the digital, so they're putting up their FM transmitters, their shortwave transmitters, and and they're finding ways to continue to communicate. And I have little doubt that you will soon see maybe some drone attacks begin to happen where I hope the Myanmar folks can kind of figure that out, how you can... You have 3D printing. These people, there's a lot of uh, smart, smart people in Myanmar. I, I don't know how you pronounce Myanmar, Myanmar. I apologize. I'll learn it eventually. Uh, but you have these smart people, uh, scientists, engineers... They know how to run 3D printers. They know how to design. They can they can they can print their drones and and send them into the in into the enemy camp. Uh, it's it's gonna happen. You're gonna see more hacking disruptions, and it's not gonna be good. And what you might learn, hopefully, I'm hoping what you might learn from Myanmar is if you do not have the will of the significant portion, and I mean 90 plus percent maybe, of the people in your land. And, they have, and the other people have come to the point where they feel like existentially they have no future. You can't hold that land. Technology has shifted. The balance of power shifted about in the 90s, I would say. Somewhere around there, the balance of power technologically shifted from the offensive to the defensive. And when that happens, large-scale systems die. But before they do, they lock down control. If you want to look at an example, study the fall of... I'll, I'll call it Catholic Europe, uh, what we call Christendom, but it's really Catholic Christendom, and I'm not saying anything against Catholics. I'm talking about Catholic Christendom in the Middle, in the Middle Ages. Catholic Christendom, as they lost the ability <laughs> to consolidate power, what happened was uh, they, they clamped down. They tried to clamp down more and more to try to control the people, and it didn't happen. And so you had a, a period of time where you had small kingdoms and then when the balance of power shifted with the rise of uh, guns, uh, the effective, efficient rise of guns, then the large-scale systems returned, and that balance of power is now in the favor of defensive. So keep your eye on me, Myanmar. We're going to find out just how, how true I am in my assumptions.